Uh, greetings. It's me, uh, Wayman29, and um, I'm just posting a response to uh, Mel's Avaska case. Uh, my name is Legion. Um, a very interesting video. Um, I've read some of Shelby Spong's uh, books, and uh, he points out a lot of uh, interesting uh, um, problems and um, gets my mind going. Uh, however, um, after you read his material, uh, you should uh, get into uh, other books. Uh, mostly, uh, from what I've read of him, uh, he presents a lot of uh, issues and uh, elaborates on a lot of um, problems concerning the modern day thinking of the biblical text. Uh, but he never offers too many solutions. But I guess there is room for those people who put things on the table and allow other people to uh, solve them. But uh, he's he's a pretty good writer. Um, the verse you were referring to uh, was Mark 5, 9, where uh, Jesus expels the um, demons. Um, and it's taken as uh, a mental disorder, or epilepsy, or uh, whatnot. Um, it ends up being a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat, uh, topic if, if you follow the, if you follow that line on where it's going. Um, they just recently had a really good article in the BAR, Biblical Archaeology, Bible Archaeology Review, uh, this month on, uh, Jewish incantation bowls written, um, in Hebrew and Aramaic, and, um, they were used to expel demons or to bring good luck for people, um, heal people from sickness. Um, and uh, that was a really interesting article because it showed um, how um, Jewish mysticism played a part in everyday life. And um, the Jews weren't the only people at that time period uh, who were uh, talking about these kinds of things. Mostly these things uh, came to develop uh, in Judaism uh, after the exile and um, especially uh, after the uh, Persian period. Um, you find uh, a text here, um, I, I found this article, my, my buddy sent it to me, um, was the scapegoat tradition, a study in uh, early Jewish interpretation by Lester L. Ga Grabby. And um, he elaborates on one of the uh, verses in Leviticus uh, uh, 23, 26 to 32. It was a uh, scapegoat ritual where Azael, A-Z-A-E-L, is mentioned. And if you follow this line through, uh, he's found in the um, some of the Apocrypha books, First um, uh, Enoch 6, 11, where he, where he talks about it. Um, but but the spelling is is, um, is different, and then um, he ends up being demonized later. Um, the uh, the Qumran, the text of uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, also uh, uh, talks about it in um, uh, uh, Raphael. Uh, He's told to uh, bind Aziel hand and foot and throw him into darkness. So this is even before um, Revelation is written. We have the binding of evil. And Baal uh, is mentioned uh, later on. So Satan um, and demons weren't really given a face until much later. Um, before um, the exile, Satan was the accuser or the prosecutor in the heavenly uh, court. Uh, you read things like Job and references in the book of Kings. Um, you see him um, going out and, and saying, hey, you know, uh, Yahweh, I don't really think that this person is uh, what he says he is, so let me go out and, and see. So he was allowed to do that, and, and Job is a perfect example on how um, uh, the Satan 
he was called the Satan or the accuser. Um, what his role was back in early uh, Jewish um, literature before the exile. And um, actually, when after the exile in the later periods, uh, one of the first times that angels in um, heavenly realms were actually named is in the book of Tobit. Um, so it's interesting to follow that line through. Also in the um, ancient Near Eastern texts, I'm, I'm kind of looking at my computer here. I, I have my uh, Bible program up. Um, there's an Assyrian prayer against evil spirits. Um, so they weren't the only ones who were uh, doing these sorts of things. Um, it talks about some of the stuff that they did. Um, here is an um, exorcis exorcism being done. Um, a spirit of an unburied corpse who could not find rest and remain prowling about the earth so long as it had a body above the ground. Um, and, it, and possibly you could find this online. It's an Assyrian prayer against evil spirits. So if you want to look that up. Also, uh, a really good reference um, to the whole topic is um, the Golden Bough. It's um, it's a book bu written by uh, George Frazier, and um, it was put out um, a while back. I, c I can't remember the exact year, um, but he ended up um, writing on um, an anthropology book. It, it has kind of strong language, but he had an anthropology book out on um, uh, the different customs um, and religious uh, ideas of people from all over the world. And it's a great book. I'll see if I can bring it up here. The uh, One of the old, um, older copies of the book is in public domain now. Uh, he was from 1922. And um, if I go to the contents page here, uh, I'll give you the uh, the chapter for that. Uh, it, it has public scapegoats in chapter 57, uh, expulsion of embodied evils. In uh, section 2 of chapter 57, it's um, the expulsion of evils in a material vehicle and um, periodic expulsions of evil. So um, certain times of year, people would do this. Um, so you, in the story of Mark 9, uh, he casts them into the, the herd of swine. So uh, that would be um, the transference to uh, animals. Uh, that would be in chapter 55. And they, he lists four or five examples of each. In, um, so it will kind of globalize the whole thing and get us out of the, uh, the Christian theology point of view of it and kind of step step us back and have us look into the situation. I know that there were plenty of e Egyptian um, prayers uh, to the uh, concerning the same topic. So we need to ask ourselves, you know, how, how did the whole thing evolve so we can we can paint a better picture? And, and I think if you go through some of this stuff and you, and you look at it, uh, it'll be really interesting for you. Um, so I just wanted to write and elaborate on that a little bit, and uh, it's good to see you on, and uh, I really enjoy your videos, and um, have a safe trip to the uh, doctors tomorrow. Take care.